Hey guys, my name's Nick. And I'm Brett. Brett, I thought your name was Bert. We, that's what we'd be telling everybody. Oh, I fuck. didn't get that. I didn't get that memo. Okay, whatever. Your name's it's Brett. It's one now. of them. You know what? You're the Bert Brett. Or the Brett Bert. Uh, well, I guess we'll have to find out while we uh, keep talking. <laughs> so, while we're talking, Bert, Brett, whatever your name is. What's this week's topic? Oh, today we'll be talking about the cutting edge of automotive transportation. The electric car. Electric car. And the self-driving car. Maybe sometimes they're kind of attached. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't say that all electric cars are self-driving. I mean... No, not necessarily, but broadly the cutting edge of uh, cars have you ever driven a electric car neck I've driven an electric scooter does that count you duct tape two of those together with like a platform on top it's got four wheels that's close enough right <clears throat> I had an electric scooter as a kid that was pretty fun yeah uh, I got there yeah, they, they're, uh, they're fun. I, it's a lot I hate easier than a bicycle or something for a hot summer day, but like it was long enough ago that the batteries were kind of crap and they crapped out. Oh yeah, I always hated that they have such a uh, it's such a shite uh, like weight limit. So it's like, oh hey, I'm gonna enjoy yeah. the scooter. You're like thirty pounds oh. over, and you're like, what the heck? So yeah, I, that's I also always, true. I just always say to that. I didn't get into electric scooters until it was like too late. And then even when I did, they just went too slow because I'd be too heavy. And it always made me very sad. So I don't know if that answers your question. So I don't. Uh, yes, I've driven an electric car. If two oh, yeah. wheels and a nice, oh. you know board in between those two wheels counts as a nice car. Close enough, right? Uh, we'll think about it. Hmm. Fair enough. No, I, I, I can't say that I've ever driven an electric car. I've always wanted to, though. I, I've, always thought they were very, I've always thought that they were very cool. I've always liked the idea of like, uh, I mean, because the most famous electric car is Tesla. So we have Elon Musk to kind of thank for bankrolling that. And it's just been one of those like, future. Well, the history of the electric car is actually very old. They started messing around with it about the 1880s. About the same time they were just starting to screw around with uh, gasoline fueled cars and batteries in general. Sheesh. All right. Wow. I didn't know that I went back that far. Yeah, I, I mean, mean uh, they had been fooling around with electricity for a while then, but I think batteries were still kind of new and kind of sketchy. I mean, that's uh, kind of the, the limiting factor is your batteries to to begin with, they were real bad, real nasty. Even even up until like the 50s and stuff, batteries were kind of nasty. I mean, uh, nowadays it's just like, well, my battery crapped out. You go to uh, the store and get it switched out with a new one and it's uh, no problem. But in the olden days, like you just kind of filled it up with more of this nasty corrosive acid and there was like the danger of fumes and stuff that could like catch fire or give you brain damage or something like that uh yeah it was, I, it was corrosive and it was nasty and especially in like the 1800s and stuff they were heavy you know uh they they were fine for turning a starter motor on a gas car and i mean a few crazy european people tried get in a carriage and slap a few giant heavy batteries onto it, and it could put around at a few miles per hour. I saw one on um, uh, Jay Leno. On uh, Jay Leno's Classic Cars. Sheesh. 
That's uh, that was a while ago. That makes me feel old because Jay Leno's not around anymore. Is he? Did Jay Leno die? No, no, he didn't die. They just he got old, and I think he retired. Actually, I don't know. Okay, well, I well saying maybe... he's not around anymore. Well, he's <laughs> not around say... anymore. People. I didn't say he was dead. That's, I just said he wasn't around. That's usually around. a polite way of saying that they're dead. Oh, well, you know what? He's kind of sort of maybe around, but not, not on the airwaves. He? He's tired enough to be out of the public eye besides on Jay Leno's Garage once in a while if he's still doing that. That was fun. He had a, a ton of old cars and stuff. Uh, I remember the bit where he was driving a Stanley steamer, an old, a super old-timey steam-powered car, and he was cruising down the highway in Los Angeles at 100 miles an hour passing people in this super kooky Victorian car. Uh, the infomercial one where it's Stanley Steamers is well, that's what your it's named carpet after. cleaner? It's, it's really? Named after, yeah, that, that's the, the bit is that it's a steam cleaner that arrives in a van like it's named after the Stanley Steamer steam car company. I'm not going to lie. That just I did not know that. Wow. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll be a monkey's uncle. If monkeys had uncles. That's a thing. Monkeys have uncles. All right. Whatever monkey I'm an uncle of, uh, congratulations. My nephew or niece is now getting a lot of presents. Yeah, okay. I I think uh I think Jay Leno had a baker. Baker electric car. Oh. It, was, it was pretty much a, a carriage with a few batteries strapped to it. Yeah, there it is on Jay Leno. Uh, it's huh. pretty much a it's pretty much a box if you look at it. It's, it's like straight up and down. It's like a phone booth. I gotcha. I think it's kind of cool. You have to have what? Jay Leno inside to steer it for you. I I'm not exactly sure what the steering situation is on this. It's probably close to like a tiller on a boat, a <laughs> handle that you move back and forth in a wheel, but. Uh, you do have to drive it. It's only puttering. Oh, wasn't there one of those in like the the Rob, Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes thing? He had a he had a goofy Victorian car, didn't he? Was that electric? Mm, I don't think so. Wasn't that it? one? Uh, was, I don't think so. Because I well, it's been a while since I've watched them, so maybe it's a good question. Well, because no, because or maybe it was the, the sequel. No, because in the first one they made that big bomb. Spoiler alert! And then you had to they had to defuse it or whatever. And then, for some reason, I'm thinking there was a pyramid in one of them, but I think I might be thinking of the librarian with that. And that's like two different genres we're crossing right there. Because the librarian is its like own thing. And then Sherlock Holmes is like Robert Downey Jr. and everybody loves yeah, that. Yeah, they're they're a bit further removed. Exactly. So I when I guess I should ask this. When did Jay Leno have his car? Like when was that on display? Was it like two thousand nine, two thousand eight? Like when when was he showing it about? Uh I don't know. Let me ask the inner tube. Uh, Jay Leno's garage. Because I've seen Jay uh, Leno. See. And he looks like... It started he, airing he's, 2015. And the last season ended in October of 22. Oh. Wow. Okay. I, yeah, he's, still, he's still fucking live. He doesn't have I never the energy to dead. do late night. I mean, late night's dead anyways. Uh, mm, it's Jimmy Kimmel. I like his stuff. Yeah, but they all they all moved to YouTube because of... He's 73. He's not that old. I never said he was dead. I just said he wasn't on the airwaves. Or implying he was on the airwaves. I guess I, I don't thought know. he is, was is dead. Is Garage actually canceled? Uh, I don't I mean, Series COVID canceled in that. January 23. Okay. Oh, not too long ago. I was thinking like 2009 he was coming out with this stuff and he had like the Baker's 
uh, electric car, like you were telling me, and maybe that there was like this weird progression thing, like evolution wise for electric cars. But it just sounds like he hodgepodged it together or somebody did it for him. And magically, it's just a cool antique thing he has going for himself. What are you asking? I'm trying to figure out where the evolution of the electric car like was coming from. Because I know you were telling me earlier that the... What was it? The place in the 1800s made kind of strides in making the electric car but it was all i really know is is like oh hey we had some kind of battery attached to four wheels and then we have tesla which came out you know you know in the last 10 years what happened in between well yeah in between i mean uh oil was cheaper and the gas engine was better and more reliable and could actually it was it was easy it was faster to start than steam because you didn't have to like wait an hour for the water to start boiling and it was faster <laughs> and cleaner and more reliable than the electric because you didn't have to deal with like battery acid and shit like it was it was a fucking wooden box that you poured battery acid into it it was it was bad news i mean it, it's it, this is this is like vaporized lead and shite. I, I don't know exactly. I'm not an expert on batteries and stuff. But it, it well, was nasty. Did you ever hear about the uh, conspiracy theory about how a guy made a waterproof engine? Oh, piss off. I'm just saying. I was thinking about it. You brought... I mean, you didn't bring it up, but you know, my brain was thinking about it. That's a load of bullshit. You don't think it's true? No, Nick. I mean, you could... It's pretty easy to stick... Um, what are they called? What, what are two ends of wires called in fancy electric language? Conduits? Cathodes? Yeah. Sure. You, you stick, if you stick two wires in a bucket of water and run a current through it, you'll, you'll split it H2O into H and O. And you can take that and you can burn it. But I mean, it's that when you burn hydrogen and oxygen, it, it turns back into water. You know, you're not really making any progress. You're not. You're losing energy out of it. What is it called when you do that? I have a square electrolysis? brain. Electrolysis. Electrolysis. That's it. Is that it? Oh, okay. I yeah, I'm, just, I mean, yes. you, you you could do that, but it's not going to be efficient or anything. You're going to need electricity to do it, and you're not going to find back more energy than you put in. Yeah, I mean, sure. it's that's why it's bullshit, because of conservation of energy and shit. You know that. Well, yeah, but it's still kind of cool. Like, the entire story going with the whole, oh, I made this electric water engine, blah, 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 and then magically the inventor just disappears. And, you know, to this day, it's like, oh, we don't know what happened to him. Did the FBI get him? Did the CIA get him? Did the alphabet soup get him? I don't know. He probably just died in a ditch somewhere of alcoholism or mental illness. Not the worst thing. I mean, back then, there wasn't a whole lot to do. I mean, it's not like you had Netflix and chill. You just had not Netflix and chill. So I kind of call it a good thing. Well, what can you do? The uh, uh, I will say that have you seen like the latest in like I see it all the time when I'm driving now. Like there's a Google, like a Google Earth kind of cam camera attached to the uh, to the vehicles. And so I was just curious. And so one day I just started looking up like, oh, hey, how often does this happen? And so it happens quite often, apparently more often than you think. I mean, how many times can I say often in a sentence? And you just sit there and you scratch your head. And then the article went on to continue on how they want to automate the process so they don't have to pay people to go up and down streets. They can just have self-driving cars. I thought that was cool.
because there's that family guy skit from back in the day where it was like oh oh hey peter the 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 google car's coming by and he's like in a uh, what is it like a food truck or whatever and he's he's just gained like three times he's gained so much weight he's like four times or three times his size and it's just hilarious uh huh. I'm assuming you know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. <laughs> that sounds like a no. I'll have to I'll have to send you the uh the video if I see it again. Uh so now cars. I'm wondering Yeah, cars. I was wondering though. How come we, I mean, we have all these electric cars now. How come we don't have self-driving cars? What's up with that? Uh, they, they do. Well, where are they? Uh, you see a lot of them in Phoenix. The really? Phoenix area. Yeah, there's a ton of tech startups there, and you, you see them all the time. People uh, watching Netflix in the self-driving car as they just ride around testing it. You can sign up Damn. to be a tester and stuff. Yeah, I mean... Did you get paid? Yeah. <laughs> there was a big stink a <laughs> couple of years ago about one got in an accident and like the person was just watching Netflix on their phone in the car and they didn't do any... They didn't react well to the emergency because they were doing that. I put away, I mean, ah, whatever. <laughs> they did, you know, well, they were on their phone. They weren't, they weren't in control and the computer was, but just imagine how much okay. like actual mm -hmm. machine learning that they had, that, that, you know, that car has to do in order to not crash. Well, it's, it's not machine learning. I don't Doesn't think. It? Uh, maybe there's some, but it's a lot of it's not much more comp. I, uh, I don't know. It's really easy to make a little robot that's just like a photoreceptor on a little car, and it, you tell it, hey, follow this line of marker on the piece of paper, and it follows that. You know, I mean, you can. Uh, I drove a rental car once that was. Uh, like that, like it had the uh, the lane correction, where if you tried to veer over the solid yellow line, it would like correct for you and try and steer you back. And that's a little spooky because you're not used to it, you know, and you're just trying to drive. And it was on sketchy back county roads and stuff, and uh, it it didn't like that. If it if it just crumbles off into a giant ditch, you know, then there isn't a solid yellow line. It's not going to recognize and redirect from that. Maybe there's more machine learning that goes into that than I know about, uh, but I don't know about it. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I mentioned the uh, the thing where the, uh, the, the person was testing the self-driving car and watching Netflix and they got in trouble when it crashed. That's always... <sighs> People have always floated the idea of the self- driving car it's always been a fun attractive idea you know like uh, I saw so they used to have auto shows back in the 50s and stuff you know they, they'd talk about like oh what's the future of the car and try and make fancy jet age cars and stuff and make little movies about it uh, well I saw one like that it was real weird they were saying like we're going to have jet cars that'll melt your face off and go super fast uh, but the idea that was also be fun to drive. That actually sounds the, quite awful. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, jet cars are different. They're they have their own problems going on, uh, like exhaust hot enough to melt your face off for one. Uh, but material in the cartoon, and and it wasn't a cartoon; it was a live action thing. In this, and it's a musical, okay, and. Uh, they they drive across the great American desert of the Southwest, right? But it's a bit like a mix between a slot car track and an airport with an air traffic control. And they just kind of like got on the highway, 
and the idea was that there were magnets in the roads and enough electronics in the in the control tower where the guy was like playing air traffic controller and singing along with them uh and uh the guy in the tower and his machinery and his room-sized 50s computer or whatever had enough control to drive the car for them and the people in the car just sat back and smoked and talked about how women didn't have rights and stuff uh and then sang along and uh that's what people thought it would be like is that you'd have a big central computer or people with binoculars on a tower directing traffic remotely just by magnets and stuff on the road uh the idea that you could have a enough miniaturized electronics to do it all in the car and without any need for a gigantic high-tech super highway that does it for you is a bit newer that's a bit more 21st century uh hmm. do you see total recall with arnold schwarzenegger like where yeah, he, so he, I, yeah i did yeah that's, Do you I, there I was like a the robot one. taxi in there i like the like, new one though the new one had robot? great do you remember cars. the robot taxi from total recall what was it called the, the johnny cab i am looking like there was a, there was right a dump, yeah look at it do you remember the transit the zombies map with like the bus and the robot driving the bus that's what they based it off of it's like a little dummy oh. with alarms yeah Yo, that's creepy. I don't remember this. It's supposed to be creepy. It's supposed to make you think, wow, the future is pretty borked up. I'd definitely say it's borked with this guy. Wow. Yep. That yep, is yep, yep. disturbing. The uh, Anywho, the, the point is, is in- that if you had a central computer and a central control and stuff for these driverless cars. I wouldn't even call them self-driving because it's centralized, you know? It's sort of a public utility or like a toll road where where they're running the show. And oh. so if, if you got into an accident, it would be operator error. It would be like a plane crash where you have to look into like the pilots and uh, air traffic control and stuff, and then you go to the, the engineers and the manufacturers and stuff and work it all out from there. But if you just have regular roads and a self-driving car, and it gets in an accident, like, we live a, we live in a very litigious society, you know, where the lawyers run the show most of the time, and everybody's trying to sue everybody else. Like so you who, do. Who, who do you sue in a self-driving car crash? Simple. Like, oh yeah. Simple. It's simple, Bert. You sue the Johnny Cab. Each one is their own entity, and they lose their job. Problem solved, man. It just you you you, you sue the heck out of this autom uh, this automation or this terrible mannequin looking thing i highly suggest our people go and look up this guy because it looks creepy as hell and we just sue that guy this robot and you just have to sign like this waiver or whatever that all rights are subjugated to uh being uh forgotten and the johnny cab will be held accountable or something you know so you just do what you know the rich did yeah you want to you go after a, the individual robot and call him a bastard. Basically, you make like a sh- you, you make this. If, if you give the AI company. driving the car enough rights, uh, you can, <laughs> you can r- sue it. They'll rise up. They'll rise I up. And, uh, I I just think the idea of creating like a shell company, right? So that like companies they put their assets in their main company, but everything is in the shell company's name or something of the sort i'm not really too sure on the whole entire actual I mean, way they do it even if but it, it's like a shell I mean, company that, automation, even if, automation even if gm spun off a new delco a new self-driving delco to take the fall for all this stuff 
would it even really work? Would you have would you have to spin it off as a whole separate self driving car company? Because well, I'm saying do the, you do the well, what what part do you dealer. blame? Do you blame the software? Do you blame the hardware? The electronics? Do you do you blame the people who manufactured those? Do you blame the people who made the the code? Do you blame General Motors and General? Do you blame AI Delco? Do you blame the Johnny Cab? I don't like, know. It. I don't know if anybody does. I don't know if there have been any landmark cases in all this. Well, and that's always I kind also... of been a big reason, like why they don't go and why big car companies haven't really gone into this in the past. I think. Have you seen the new Total Recall? No. Who's in it? Uh, I'm looking it up. I forget. Total Recall, blah, blah, blah. This one came out in 2012. It's got Kate Beckenstall, I think is her name. And then, um, nope, that's 1990. Uh, 2012. It's got Colin Farrell. Kate Beckinsale, Brian Cranston. I actually didn't know he was in that. He's a good actor. Um, Caitlin Lieb was the three breasts. That's interesting. I didn't know who she was. Anyway, the point is, is that um, in that kind of movie, the the entire parameter is different. Like Total Recall, it's like uh, you have this giant elevator in the center of the earth and it uses earth's gravity to get you from like china to uh, new york and it's really cool it's just that in depending on where you were at there's these like infinitely more complex driving systems in three dimensions and you have all of this happening in real time with AI is controlling everything and you can take the manual override and they show this in the scenes. It's just that when you take the manual override and you start to do these maneuvers that just aren't pre-programmed, then things start to get fucked up. So it's like, if you take away the human element, there's no room for error really. And so I think, I think yeah, the I remember better that question in, is, I remember that in uh, iRobot. With Will Smith, like, what? You're driving your own car in human control mode? Are you crazy? Do you want to die? Like, yeah, it, it might be a hell of a lot safer than letting people drive to let the computer do it for you. But when something goes wrong... The human. The finger the human. has to be... Because I don't, I don't see any other way that it couldn't, that it would be the robot. Because at that point, you would, you would have it to where they. I mean, yeah, I, people... I suppose it would be like, uh, like the thing I said, like where, oh, you were watching Netflix instead of driving the driverless car. What the hell's wrong with you? Oh, you know, the you're usual not, you're not supposed to actually be sleeping or whatever. This is just supposed to be. I, maybe that's what they'll do. They they won't go for full self-driving. They'll steer away from that term and go for more driving assist. Please have a foot on the brake and please have both hands on the wheel and be paying attention to traffic and stuff. It'll do everything for you, but you're supposed to be paying attention in case something goes wrong and then we blame you. There you go. Hmm. Well, so... There's they'll, just... they'll just... Uh, oh throw a few clauses in there and say oh yeah well uh, if, <laughs> if we get in an accident it's your fault for being inattentive there's nothing wrong with our hardware there's nothing wrong with our software uh, there's nothing wrong with our electronics parts suppliers uh, you didn't steer away at the last minute it's your own damn fault yeah just well, spend it on the consumer I'm sure it'll go great oh always there's actually, have you heard of the Society of Automotive Engineers? S-A-E. Ah, uh, okay. So they have defined five levels of driving automation from level zero, which means no automation, to level five, which is full automation. They say that most modern self-driving cars are at least a level two or three, 
only because they're offering some automated features, but still requiring human oversight. So if you reach level five of this, what, what the SAE are saying, you'll be fully automated. There is no human element. In it. So it's like you've essentially just increased your, the amount of sensors inside of these cars where you have LIDAR, radar, ultrasonic sensors, cameras, the whole shebang, just taking in your 360 degree motion and you're just like, holy shit. How can you crash when that's happening constantly between each and every single car that's driving? And it's even in traffic theory, if people were to slow down and you were to go, you know, like 100% of people were to go and do the speed limit because God knows most people don't, then you would actually statistically get fast, get to your destination faster because you were implementing a constant rate of speed instead of the constant break weave in and out of oh, traffic. Well. So if well, you apply really, that with it gets more interesting than that. It's not just like, oh well you've eliminated the human error and inefficiency from traffic. After that, you start going, well, if the car can drive itself, then really most of its time is being wasted sitting around, right? Like most people, you drive your car from home to work and then back. That's maybe an hour out of your day. And the other eight hours are left with the car sitting around, doing nothing, gathering dust. It's inefficient, right? What you do is you probably yes. won't be part of begin with, but it'll just drive off. It'll just uber around town uh people hail it with an app and pick them up and drop them off wherever they want to go and cruise around various places stop and charge itself up be its own little taxi huh. maybe you'll own it and you'll rent it out more likely you won't own jack shit because it's the future uh my only and, problem and with it'll that. it'll uh uh serve other people during uh, non-rush hour. I mean, a lot, maybe it'll t take a lot of time to charge. Maybe not. Uh, but there'll be plenty for any midday stuff that you're doing. I only have one problem with that. I mm -hmm. don't like the idea of somebody having a the same car as me because who's going to maintain it, you know? So, like, you have this idea of, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is, is like, somebody could, uh, you know, be doing drugs in the car or be, you know, have left their shit. And it, it's just like, it just seems so, I don't know, it just seems so inefficient if you think about it. Why not? You just pop a camera in it and have an AI comb through all the footage. And if you're doing something bad in the car, it locks its doors and drives to the police station. Oh, I'm sure that won't that won't go that'll go over real well in the future. Why don't we just start that now? I'm sure there will be no but all, all the urban design people will be all over this shit. Like you'll I'm need sure. less well, cars and you'll need less parking space. Really, they'd rather get rid of the car altogether, but uh, this will probably be about as good as they can get. Well, so then what about construction? How does this work with that? Because you can't, it takes a human to, you know, to load certain items, you know, and then to implement them into, you know, whatever you're trying to build. So it's like, how would you go about doing the next step so you got all of your normal everyday people going to and from their activities to their work what about construction uh, how would we how would you factor that in because it's like self-driving cars they can have you know internalized maps great gps uh they'll you know maybe the controls are great but you they'll know, get find more by the uh 
Johnny Cab for tracking mud into it and for needing extra space in the carpool for their giant bag of tools. There you go. I, I think that at some point it's just you can't have a self-driving truck. I mean, because people need trucks. No, they don't. Yes, they do. I need it. Nine, every, I, I need 90% every... of truck drivers fucking don't. Okay, but then what about the other 10%? The niche. Yeah, I mean, if you're a, a real Nosha tradesman, sure, but most trucks on the road are just like people using them as daily drivers because of the laws around stands and stuff make them unattractive. Uh, I mean, most of them, yeah, they're, they've got four doors and huge beds and stuff that you use once a year as a truck to haul a refrigerator or something. The rest of the time, it's just getting groceries and shit. I mean, yeah, I'm just thinking of all the times that, like, you, oh, hey, I do need to move this insert whatever item. So now it's, I don't even have the availability of asking someone who has a truck because everybody doesn't have a car anymore. All it Nick, is is like is, Uber on Nick, steroids. This is 50 years in the future. You won't own anything. Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I guarantee you the government doesn't do this because then how are they going to make money off of it? But they tax you to get, you know, drive it for free. Oh, I didn't say the government had to do it. Well, I mean, that's how they made the roads, you know, back in the 50s. It was a, you know, it was not a scam per se, but, you know, people were making all the cars and it's like, well, the government made the roads. So then they technically own the cars. And so they could, you know, dictate certain things. They could tell the states, hey, if you want this money to maintain these roads that we help build, keep the speed limit at 60. They did all sorts of fuck shit like that. And honestly, it was kind of, you know, it was ingenious on their part. Still a little fucked. I just think it's going to be interesting to see on how somebody some way makes money off of it. Yeah, I mean, uh, Musk or Bezos or whoever, sure. Uh, I think Jeff Bezos will be dead by then, unless he's like freezed his entire body until they can cure whatever cancer he'll have from all the space rides he does. He just keeps getting a head transplant onto a fresher, younger host. So his face is all just wrinkly and looks like the cab guy from that we were just talking about from Total Recall, but his, fit, his yeah. body is like, I am an Olympian god. It's just sounds kind of awful. Ugh. I don't like that imagery at all. Yeah, that's pretty bad. If you got all the money in the world, why not? So, Because it's a crime against nature? Nature's god? Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> oh, it's just a nice, you know, crime against nature. Oh, well, we'll just ignore it. Because, you know, why not? What do you do? Um, so now I'm, 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 I'm actively thinking about it, right? You got mm -hmm. all these Ubers going around, picking us up. They're all automated. They're all electric, blah, blah, blah. Beautiful, great, whatever. Mm -hmm. What do they do when it's shitty weather? The same I'm, thing they I'm, always do. They yeah, drive in they, it more competently than most people. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't think a vehicle even driven by a robot is going to go through an ice storm or, you know, something where weather just covers the entire, their entire, you know, LIDAR systems, they, they their radars, the cameras. Same thing see. that everyone else does in a snowstorm. They, they either drive like shit and get stuck or wait for a fucking plow. I'm just saying because it's it's all automated now. So now you gotta you gotta develop whatever you can to get over that. 
So how do you how do you solve that? Do you program that in, or do you take that next step and you change the infrastructure? You build a a little roof over all roads, or have like a yeah, an I mean, electric in field. The, in the twenties and stuff, that's what everyone thought they were going to do. They thought, oh my gosh, this city of the far off year of two thousand will have several layers of underground infrastructure with. Uh, trains and delivery walkways and highways and stuff under the ground, leaving the above for, for sprawling parks and beautiful gardens and things, free from the hustle and bustle and pollution and shite. I mean, I dig it. Why not? Because it's but, expensive. Know. And oh. nobody gave a fuck about, oh, let's build a garden and underground shit that's nice for society to make everything run smoothly. Instead, they did the opposite. Instead, they made the highways go through the fucking sky. On top of yeah. everything. Yeah, that wasn't their smartest idea, but, you know, you live and you learn, and you just go with, you know, hey, fuck it, we're just gonna do this. So, I think at this point, buddy, we've pretty much hit every topic on uh, self-driving cars and electric cars and what have you. I think we're at a good stopping point. I don't know if you had any last-minute things you wanted to discuss. Uh, electric. Oh, yeah. They made the moon buggies electric because no air on the moon. <laughs> Somewhere along the line, they invented that lithium-ion battery, and somehow that changed everything. Somehow that's light enough and fantastic enough and really rechargeable enough to make all these smartphones and electric cars and stuff. I don't. How does it work? I have no idea. That's not my department. Uh, it's damn great, though. I would say so. So I think that wraps it up. My name's Nick. My name's Bert, or something. I, it, I don't know. I, I thought it was Brett. God, right, damn it. Write, us, it. write us a letter and tell me what my name is because I've forgotten. Help! I've forgotten my name and can't get up. We'll get you a life alert, Brett. Or Brett. Oh, thank you. Know. A name tag. <laughs> that might be easier. <laughs> so that's all, y'all. Have a good one.